Welcome back to episode five of the lower calorie series. Today, personal pizza. First, we'll make a restaurant style version to establish a baseline of calories, and more importantly, understand the underlying techniques of how it's made. Then we'll analyze where we can make lower calorie substitutions while maintaining the same volume of food and the highest level of taste adherence to the original version. And I'll tell you now, this lower calorie version is mighty fine. Hey everyone, I'm Ethan, a home cooking nerd who likes to find better ways to cook and share them with all of you. Today is a lower cal versus restaurant style pizza video where basically I'll just make both versions and then we'll talk about the differences and do a taste test between the two. Now I will be using an outdoor pizza oven today but you can absolutely just use the methods that I've shown in my sheet pan pizza or weeknight pizza videos if you don't have access. But without further ado, let's hop into the video and I'll meet you all back here for the taste test. For a restaurant style version, I'm using a general blueprint for a New York style pizza dough, which is typically around a 60% hydration and has the additions of sugar and olive oil to the dough. The dough is mixed and kneaded until it passes the gluten window test and then left to ferment for one day in the fridge. Clearly I should have used a bigger container, but the proof dough is then separated into four roughly 160 gram pieces and let out at room temperature for one hour before baking. Meanwhile, a basic tomato sauce is made by adding a can of San Marzano tomatoes to a food processor, along with a generous pinch of salt and a dash of red pepper flake. For the other toppings, low moisture mozzarella is shredded, hot Italian sausage is cooked, the pickled chili peppers are sliced, and then I melted a half tablespoon of butter with some oregano and garlic powder, which will be spread on the crust. To assemble, some flour is dusted on the counter and the round is stretched into roughly a 10 to 12 inch circle. Then moving quickly, it is placed on the pizza peel, slathered with sauce, topped with mozzarella, and finally the sausage. This is then placed into a 900 degree oven and cooked for about 90 seconds. Lastly, the cooked pizza is topped with pickled chili peppers and then brushed with the garlic butter on the crust for that Domino's kind of Papa John's feel. It's an absolute beauty of a pizza. Before we get to the calorie breakdown, here's a word about this video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community that I've been using for the past year to learn about filming, editing, and much more. But I think my favorite thing about Skillshare is that it allows me to create whatever I can dream up. For example, last November, I wanted to make a small cookbook for Thanksgiving, except I have no idea how to make a cookbook. So I took a food photography course by Leela Sid and an Adobe InDesign course by Daniel Scott. And using the skills that I learned in those classes, I was able to make this cookbook that I'm really proud of for just a couple weeks of work. Skillshare has a premium membership for less than $10 a month that gives you access to all the classes and learning communities that are right for you. But if you like saving money and just wanna try it out, the first 1,000 people who click my link in the description below will get two months of the premium membership for free. It's actually how I started using Skillshare and then I stuck around and now I'm sponsored by them. So we've kind of come full circle. So I hope you join and I can't wait to see what you create. Let's get back to pizza. Calorie breakdown time. So this whole pizza comes in at 1,038 calories, consisting of 90 grams of carbs, 49 grams of fat, and 51 grams of protein. Let's take a look at our lower calorie substitutions and how they affect the final product. First up, I will be using an 80% hydration dough. For 160 gram of the 60% hydration dough, this had 100 grams of flour and 60 grams of water. For roughly an equal size piece of the 80% hydration dough, it has 88 grams of flour and 71 grams of water. Additionally, I will not be adding sugar or olive oil to the dough. All of these changes result in a 22.7% decrease in calories for the same volume of dough. But how do they affect the final product? Quite a bit actually. For the high hydration pizza, we will get a lighter texture in the crust with a large crumb or air bubbles and a slightly crisper crust. By not using sugar, the yeast will have less to feed on, so there will be less rise and different flavors will be generated. One dough is not inherently better than the other, it really comes down to preference. For example, the classic Neapolitan dough does not use sugar or oil either, and the hydration percentage is usually between 65 to 70%. 
However, I will say that I do prefer the texture of a high hydration like 80%. Next, I'll be making a homemade chicken sausage instead of the Italian sausage. For four ounces of cooked sausage, this results in 140 fewer calories, 18 fewer grams of fat, and nine more grams of protein. How does this affect the pizza though? Well, there's way less fat in the chicken sausage, so it's gonna have less of an unctuous or oily mouthfeel that we know and love with pizza. However, for me, the chicken thighs still provide plenty of fat, and I mean, how many of you had to have to dab the excess oil off the pizza? You definitely won't need to do that this time. Lastly, as I'm sure you could guess, I'll be foregoing the garlic butter on the crust, resulting in 50 fewer calories. I do love the richness it provides, and it kind of gives it that Domino's or Papa John's vibe in a really good way, but if I'm looking to lower the calories, it's definitely an easy one to remove. Now let's walk through the step-by-step -step recipe and then do our taste test. To start, add 280 grams of warm water to a container along with three grams of instant yeast and a spoonful of flour. Though not required for instant yeast, this is done to ensure the yeast is actually alive. If there's no bubbles or foam surface, the yeast is likely dead and you should get some new ones. Meanwhile, add 350 grams of bread flour and seven grams of salt to a large mixing bowl. Once proofed, pour in the yeast mixture and vigorously mix the dough with your hands until no dry flour remains in the bowl and a cohesive mass forms, about two minutes. Cover with plastic wrap and let it rest for 15 minutes. Once it's rested, lightly fold the dough over onto itself and continue just folding the dough over onto itself and kind of knead it with your fingertips for a couple of minutes until it becomes smoother and less sticky. Once it's something like this, cut off a piece of the dough and test for gluten development by carefully stretching it very thin to check for a see-through window before tearing. This gluten window test is the key to understanding if the flour has been hydrated enough, which is how gluten is developed. You can add a couple drops of olive oil to the container and then just drop the dough down into it. Place in the fridge and let it ferment for at least one day, though you could do up to three days if you would like. On the next day, pull the dough out of the fridge and divide into four roughly 160 gram portions. Form that into a loose ball and just let it out and rest on a baking sheet for one hour before cooking. And meanwhile, let's prepare the toppings. For the sauce, add a can of San Marzano tomatoes to a food processor, along with a generous pinch of salt and some red pepper flakes. Blitz this until completely smooth for a very simple pizza sauce. For the chicken sausage, cut some boneless skinless chicken thighs into chunks and then set them on a plate. Put the plate in the freezer for 15 minutes, which is gonna help with grinding. After 15 minutes are up, add the partially frozen chicken to a food processor, along with 1.5% salt by weight, some garlic powder, rosemary, and red pepper flakes, or whatever spices you wanna use. Blitz until a rough ground mixture is formed, and then you can just fry this up on a cast iron and set it aside. Lastly, shred some low moisture mozzarella and slice up the pickled chili peppers. Now that we have all of our ingredients, let's go to the oven. To prepare the pizza, spread 10 to 15 grams of flour on the counter and gently work the pizza into a thin disc about 10 to 12 inches wide. Then move the pizza dough to a pizza peel and top with sauce, mozzarella cheese, and the sausage. You wanna be quick here and not load this with too many toppings or else the pizza dough will get kind of thin and hard to slide in the oven. Once we ensure that pizza is still gonna slide off the peel, slide it into the oven and cook for about 90 seconds and just enjoy watching the cooking. Once done, slide the cooked pizza onto the plate and add those pickled peppers, and it is time to enjoy. This lower calorie pizza comes in at 757 calories, 77 grams of carbs, 20 grams of fat, and 58 grams of protein. Here's the side-by-side -side shot to the restaurant version. As you can see, it has 281 fewer calories. And to put that in perspective, 281 calories is equal to one and one half original glazed Krispy Kreme donuts or 14 25 gram servings of baby spinach. Anyways, I think it's taste test time. So I can already tell you that these are probably the best two pizzas that I've ever produced, but let's actually do a taste test and compare the differences between the two. This one got a little, little burn on this edge, but it's, it's perfectly fine. 
A little bit of char never hurt anyone. And actually it's kind of, I mean, some people may, you know, that might be what they're looking for. You can listen to it and hear this. Quick Bev. And if you're wondering why I'm getting milk out to drink this with, it's because my mom wouldn't let us get soda when we got pizza like ordered out growing up. So I'm really used to drinking milk with pizza. It's like, it's like the combination that I enjoy. Let's just dive in. Oh my gosh, that is so good. All right, low-cal version. Well, there's not much more that I can want from pizza, I can tell you that. Both of them absolutely delicious, but uh, let's break them down a little bit. So starting off with the dough is the big one, the, the texture differences between the two. You know, we've got the big bubbles in the crust and you could see that happening in the oven. Those bubbles like really exploded and expanded. Um, whereas this one, you know, they're more dense. It's a little bit more chewy, which is kind of typical of that, you know, that classic pizza that we know. It's like the kind of the Papa John's, Domino's kind of chewier pizza. And I, I really do love that texture too. But actually I do prefer the really high hydration pizza. I've used it um, before in my weeknight pizza video. And I don't know, there's something about high hydration doughs that I just really like. It's very unique kind of texture. It's very light and airy, but it is still chewy at the same time. It's uh, it's hard to describe. You should definitely try out high hydration dough if you, you know, you get the opportunity. And then as far as the sausage goes, I mean, this one's like that classic, you know, heavy on the fennel seed, um, you know, oily kind of sausage, that typical like 30% fat ratio. Whereas the chicken thigh one, it's not really fatty at all, but I kind of really like the clean flavor of it because you get plenty of, you know, the cheesiness and the sauce, it really balances well. It doesn't really overpower it. Whereas this one, the sausage is more like, yo, like I'm eating sausage pizza. This one's kind of like, I'm, I'm here with the other ingredients. I'm not overpowering it with like my oiliness and you know, my fennel seed flavor. It's kind of just hanging out. And I actually really like the balance of this. And I mean, yeah, it's pretty lower, much lower calorie, not to mention higher protein. So if that's something, you know, trying to get more protein in your diet, I think this is a very good option. Um, it's something that I really do enjoy. And, and this is like the second time this week I've made this type of sausage. The other one wasn't on pizza, I just made it to make it. Um, and then lastly, we have the garlic butter crust, which I'll be honest, the garlic butter crust actually, it makes it a lot better. Like this is so good with the garlic butter crust. And it, it is only like 50 calories. So I think if I was redoing this, I'd probably put it on the outside of this one because you're making bigger strides with using either, you know, a less fatty protein like chicken or using that higher hydration dough. So I probably would do a little bit of bar garlic butter crust because it really does provide that little bit of like, I don't know, that like nostalgic, like butter, like garlicky buttery crust. I don't, something about it. But anyway, in conclusion, both very delicious. Hopefully this gives you guys some ideas on how to, you know, raise calories, lower calories, do whatever you want with this information. That's all these videos are for. They're just to give you ideas and because that's really how I like to cook. You know, I don't want to eat like a, a non pizza. Like if I want pizza, I want to make a pizza. But if I want it to be lower calorie, you know, and I can knock off a couple hundred, you know, by using some simple techniques versus, you know, eating like a, a flatbread pizza or something like that, which isn't really like a, it's just not as satisfying as normal pizza. So this is how I like to eat. And that's kind of why I make these videos, just to give you guys the information. You can use it however you want to. So that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Thank you again to everyone who's been watching, subscribing. Um, thank you to my supporters on Patreon. And I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.